So Excel is just great for doing calculations and with this you can create formulas. So to demonstrate how to do this, I've got this little spreadsheet here. It's got a unit price for some items, a quantity, a subtotal that we're going to do a calculation with, there's a shipping cost, then we're going to calculate some tax and do a total. So for this we're going to use multiplication, we're going to use addition, I'm going to quickly show you as well, division and subtraction as well, and also what brackets are for when you're doing calculations, and that might take you back to some school mathematics in prioritizing how you do calculations. So in Excel, we could in fact go in, every calculation or formula starts by pressing equals, and there are functions as well, and you can see those in my introduction to functions. If you look on my YouTube channel or my website, you'll see them there for both Windows and for Mac as well. So I could go 100 multiplies the asterisk or the star, whatever you want to call it, to, and there you have your calculation. Problem is, and the great thing about Excel is if you were to change the quantity, it doesn't change. So I'm just going to delete that just by pressing the delete key. And what I'm going to do is the calculation, but rather than use the numbers, I'm going to use the cell references. So that's B6 that's C6, and I'm going to multiply them together. And you could do it by simply going equals B6 multiplied by C6. And you don't have to worry about uppercase, lowercase. If I pressed enter and we come back here, you can see it, put it into uppercase anyway, which can sometimes be a good check that you haven't made a little typo. Another way you can do it, and I'm just going to delete this again, press the equals. I can click on there. Then I can press the asterisk again, and I can go across using just the arrow key. So you can use the arrow key, or you can press using the mouse. Then when you're done, you press Enter. Now, when I change that value, you'll see it instantly changes. So there you go. So you can use, if you want, a combination so of numbers and cell references as well. So here, for the tax, I'm going to do it by adding these two together. So I've got my subtotal, I've got my shipping, and the tax will just do it at 10%. Wouldn't it be nice in the UK if it was 10%? So I'm going to do it just by pressing equals. So it's just the 200, I just use the arrow keys there, plus, and then I can click on the shipping. I can do it either way. And I'm going to times by 10, and I'm going to actually type 10%. You could type in 0.1 if you wanted. Now this is going to have a little bit of a problem here because Excel does things very strictly in, in terms of order. So multiplication and division are done first, and then anything in addition and subtraction are done second. It's not in order from start to finish. And brackets also influence how you do things as well. So you might remember something at school, which was a thing called BODMAS, which is brackets. Then you've got your power, which is the O, then division, multiply, addition, subtraction, and it goes in that kind of order. So if I was to do this now, it would take my E6, which is that 10, and multiply it by the 10%, and then add it on, which is going to give us 201, if my maths is right. There we go. But that's not correct. What we wanted to do was do the 200, then add the 10, and then do the 10%. So I'm just going to do that here. I'm just going to go into my formula bar up at the top here. And just so you know, I'm just going to press on escape. I could double click here and do it right here. So if I put brackets in, it's going to make sure that it does the plus first, then it's going to do the 10%. Okay, there we go, 21. That's 210. 10% of 210 is 21. I like using nice simple numbers for these. That way at least I can almost do it in my head. So the total is simply going to be these three added together. I could use a sum function, which you can see in my functions one, and we'll quickly do that in a moment. But just for the sake of it, I'm going to go equals that plus, I'm taking the mouse and clicking on that one, plus, and just for a variation, I'm going to type it in just so you can see you can do any one of those. Press enter, and it's totaled it all up. So that's terrific. Now, there is another thing we could do as well, which is the auto sum, if you were just summing things up, but that's something that you can have a look at in the functions. But if you want to just a quick look at it here, I'm just going to 
delete that. So a lot of times you just want to sum up a row or a column. So Excel has built that right in. And if I move across here, you'll see that there is an auto sum button right here. Click on it. Now what it's going to do is it's actually going to try and add together that whole row. I don't want that whole row. I'm just going to highlight the ones that I do want, which is just those. And you can see it now just has some D6 to F6. So a little bit extra, a little function in there. But you can see before that I just did it simply by adding it up. So just using the plus sign. So let's say I wanted to give them a discount of 10%. I could simply do that. I could go equals that. And I'm going to um, now do minus. And what I really want is that again times 10%. So just to explain that, that is G6, that's 231. I'm going to deduct 10% off of it. A little bit convoluted. I could have done this a bit uh, better, but I just want to show you the minus sign. I'm using brackets again because I want to make sure this multiplication is done first, which it would have done. So I'm taking the G6 again, multiplying it by 10%, and then I'm going to subtract it from here. So that is the amount after the discount. So that used the minus there. So I can simply just copy these from here to here. I can do that by clicking and dragging over that bottom right hand corner, which is your autofill. And I've got another podcast for that. So that simply copies the formula and makes it all relative. So let's say I want to do some division. I want to take these two and divide it by two. It sort of gives me an average. Don't really need to know it, but I'm just doing it to demonstrate the division, which is the slash sign. So what I'm going to do is add them together. So I'm just going to click on that one plus that one. I'm using the brackets to make sure that that's done first. OK, and then divide both of those by two. If I didn't use the brackets, it would divide the G7 first. Press Enter and there you have your calculation. So you've now seen how to do addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and also how to use brackets. So that should get you started. Now go and have a look at the functions ones. As I said, I've got them introduction to functions and then introduction to functions for the Mac if you happen to use a Mac.